Good morning friends, yesterday we discussed about different connections of voltage and current sources and then we discussed something about nonlinearities, different types of nonlinearities, then dot convention and we will continue with that. Uh, the dot conventions that we adopted yesterday, I will just uh, repeat. If you have a core like this, if you are having a coil, say coil A or coil 1 1 dashed and another coil having the terminals 2 2 dashed, you see the coils are wound in the same sense, the coils are wound in the same sense then if the current if I call 1 as the starting terminal, 1 dashed as the finishing terminal, similarly 2 as the starting terminal, 2 dashed as the finishing terminal. If current through terminal 1 enters into the coil okay, like this and current through 2 also enters through this coil then both of them give rise to a flux in the same direction all right or in other words if we connect this with the source and if we short circuit this one externally the current here will be flowing out of this terminal and entering through two dashed all right because it will be having by transformer action okay if you are having an alternating voltage say applied here then the current here will be going in this direction. Okay. That means what? It means that if the coils, if the coils produce identical fluxes when they are excited separately, then those terminals, the starting terminals will be shown by dots. That means an, a current entering here corresponds to current entering here from an external source. They are identical that means they give rise to the flux in the same direction. This is easy to remember all right. Now I give you an uh, example, uh, you try to find out whether this is this particular coil, uh, just one minute, this particular coil arrangement and the dot conventions are correct. You are having a toroid with a central limb. Okay. Now, you are having a coil like this, then you are having Two, 2 dashed. Then this one three, 3 dashed. I put a circle here. When there are many coils, when there are two coils then you can have two dots. When there are many coils then you have dots, triangles, rectangles, etcetera for showing the polarity, all right, all right. that is the interconnection, the mutual dependence of the two coils, mutual inductance when it comes into play. So, two coils when you have to show their interconnections, all right you can use this type of set of conventions. Now, suppose we have a circle here, a dot here and we want to 
use the dots between coil 1 and coil 2. Where should I put for 2 to dash terminals, where should I put the dot? Should it be here or here? Now you see this is the direction of the coil. So, if I send a current here, a positive current here, then what will be the direction of the flux? Does it go upward? It does. Okay. What about this one? Forget about the third coil for the time being. What about this coil and through two? Mind you, the winding sense is opposite, so it will show downward. So, so, so far as the core is concerned, it is going like this. It is in the same sense. Okay. So, this will be also dot. All right. Now, between one and three, suppose I put a rectangular block between one and three, then three or three dashed should be the rectangular block. dashed. You see the winding sense here, the windings are both in the same sense, but then this will be trying to send in a flux in this direction, this will try to oppose that, is it not? So, 3 dashed should be the corresponding terminal, is that all right? Between 2 and 3 therefore, suppose I have triangle we use this symbol between 2 and 3, then where should be the corresponding triangle? Here. Now, between this and this, so when I send a current here, it sends a flux, all right. When I send a current here, it sends a flux like this. So, it is in the same direction again. So, it should be a triangle here. Is that all right? So, this is how you should put the dots and other symbols when there are multiple coils. You first see the sense of the current and try to find out what should be the direction of the flux through the core and what would be the flux established by the other coil. If they are in the same sense, then the both the entering currents are uh, positive in a sense that they are matching. So, you put the dots accordingly from the entering terminals. Next, we go to distributed and lump parameter. Distributed and lump parameter systems. For all practical purposes in our laboratories, we assume a resistance for example, in a rheostat, in a rheostat you wind the resistance over a tube, okay. you assume the inductance is negligible, all right. you take only the resistance value, but there is an inductance there. Not only inductance, between the turns there will be interturn capacitance. Okay. So, between the turns you can assume between them there will be capacitance. Also, there can be capacitance to ground. All right, capacitance to ground. So, these values will be perceptible at very, very high frequencies. Normally, in our power frequencies, we do not find their effect. So, we consider a resistance to be an ideal one. So, as the frequency goes up, you will find one turn, if I take one turn as a basic unit, one turn will have some resistance. It will also have an inductance and then there will be a capacitance to ground, then there will be a resistance, there will be an inductance second turn and again 
capacitance to ground and so on. Okay. Not only that there will be inter turn capacitance, so I can also across each terminal I can put approximately a capacitance. So, it will be distributed like this. Even in a transmission line, in a transmission line, power transmission line, you have resistance, inductance, say we calculate on the basis of a kilometer or a mile, one kilometer length has so much of inductance, so much of capacitance and then after one kilometer, if the capacity value is perceptible, if it is a, a very high voltage line, extra high voltage line, then the capacitance to ground will also be quite appreciable and we denote the, uh, we represent the transmission line like this. So, this is the example of a distributed parameter system. At low frequencies or even in power frequencies uh, for a low length and low voltage system say 220 kV or 110 kV, 33 kV lines and 50 to 100 kilometers, we normally take a simple approximate representation say 1 capacitance to ground and the total resistance and inductance will be distributed on both sides either in this form or in this form we represent the transmission line. It is in a lumped form. So, it all depends on the nature of the problem. At very high frequencies we cannot neglect these effects, this capacitance and the series inductance. See the inductance value even if it is very small, if the frequency is multiplied manifold say 10 kilohertz or maybe uh, to the order of megahertz, then this impedance is quite substantial and th this will also tend to be almost a short circuit. That means, the capacitive current will be quite substantial. So, you have to take care of the distributed uh, parameter values. Next, we take up a uh, A voltage source, then you have resistances like this. and so on. So, this is R 1, R 2, R 3, R 4, R 5, R 6, R 7, R 8. Suppose, we are interested in computing the currents or voltages for a voltage of 100 volts applied here, what will be the current through this, what will be the voltage across this and so on. Okay. Now, we can assume either the voltage or the current through this last element R8 as unity. So, let us take 1 ampere current flows through this. We assume a current of 1 ampere through R8 then what will be the voltage across this resistance V R 8? It is R 8 into 1 ampere. So, many units of voltage. Then the current through R 7 is also 1 ampere, it is the same current. So, what will be the voltage across V R 6? Okay, I R 7 is also 1 ampere. So, what is V R 6? 
So, R 7 plus R 8 into 1. Then what will be the current through R 6 I R 6 R 7 plus R 8 divided by R 6 all right. What will be the current through R 5? I R 6 plus 1 ampere, this 1 ampere plus this. So, what will be the voltage across R 4? R 5 into this current which is this one R 5 into I R 5 plus V R 6, V R 6. V R 6 I have already computed here. So, I R 5 I have computed here. So, you substitute here you get correspondingly V R 4. Once you know V R 4 you can calculate I R 4. So, alternately you compute the voltage across these resistances that is at these nodes and next you compute the current that is drained out through the shunt elements. Once you calculate this current add with the previous current you get this current I R 3. I R 3 multiplied by R 3 is the drop here add with the previous voltage at this node you get the new node voltage at this point and so on. So, you alternately calculate current and then voltage at that node current and voltage and so on. So, you come up to this point all right. So, going like this how much will be the voltage here at the source? it will be I R 1 into R 1 voltage at the source is I R 1 into R 1 plus voltage at this node V R 2 okay, which we can compute from this node voltage adding this value I can compute this. So, as you go backward you can calculate V S. Suppose that V s comes out to be 20 volts. Okay. So, for 20 volts of supply you could get 1 ampere current. So, for 100 volts of supply what will be the current? So, you jack up the current by 5 times. Okay. So, for 20 volts if it is 1 ampere for 100 volts it is just a simple computation scale it up by that factor. So, you can compute now all the voltages and currents all these voltages everything will have to be multiplied by 5. Okay. So, all the node voltages everything is scaled up by 5. This is the very simple technique when you have to calculate the currents when there is a single source and a stru structure is like this a ladder network. Okay. We could have started with a unity value of the voltage. Voltage across this is 1, 1 volt. Then how much is the current? V by R 8. Then how much is this current? Same V by R 8. Then plus R 7. V is 1 volt. So, 1 by R 8 plus R 7 and so on. You can calculate. Before we go to two port network, I will just very briefly uh, mention about uh, some of the network essence of uh, some of the basic network theorems that is what you have learnt in the first year class. Most important is nodal analysis. It is this analysis which we apply quite often in most of the circuits and uh, it will be easier. Say let us have a simple network I have taken two simple sources. So, V 1 
and V2 say R1, R2, R3, R4, R5. They can be replaced by generalized impedances uh, when we take up later on in the Laplace domain the impedance functions we will be using those impedance functions. So, here we take one reference node take it as a ground this is only a reference. With respect to this reference you define there are two junctions here you can see A and B okay. when we say junctions there should be at least three elements which can form the junction all right that will be easier there is no point taking a node here because the current that is flowing here is a current flowing here so additional nodes will be unnecessarily increasing the number of variables so we'll try to minimize the number of variables suppose we assume the voltage of this node with respect to the ground as V A and similarly the voltage at this node as V B. <coughs> at this point we apply Kirchhoff's current law, Kirchhoff's current law. Okay. You take a point and assume all the currents are going away from that node what will be the current through the first element as if V A is at a higher potential it may be negative or positive we assume that V A to be at a higher potential then V A minus V 1 divided by R 1 will be the current through this. So, V A minus V 1 by R 1 plus then V B minus V 2 by R 5 plus V B by R 4 then next V B minus V A by R 3 equal to 0. Okay. Now, you see in the first case we had taken the direction of the current like this in the second case we assume the current to flow like this because we do not know the direction, but at that node we are applying Kirchhoff's current law. Okay. You solve for these two variables V 1 and V 2 from here you get the values of these two voltages which may be somewhere in between V 1 and V 2 we do not know the exact values they will be depending on the resistances that you have put and also the source voltages. In case of in case of AC circuits this will be a complex phasor a voltage with a phase angle this will also be a voltage with a phase angle and this will be a general impedance in the form say A plus J B or A minus J B depending on whether there is an inductance or a capacitive element along with a resistive element. Okay. So, these equations will be complex you have to solve in that case uh, both for real and imaginary parts. Okay. So, you can get V 1 and V 2 V A and V B once you know V A and V B for a given set of V 1 and V 2 you can calculate these currents just substitute in the first part of this equation you get this current second part will give you this current the third part will give you this current. So, all the branch currents can be calculated from there once you know V A and V B. So, this is how we uh, solve problems where you have more than one sources. Now, we come to a very interesting network that is two port network.
so far in your first year class we did not mention about ports we assumed number of sources here and there all right you applied superposition theorem or Thevenin's theorem or nodal analysis or mesh method and or loop method and you have calculated the currents voltages etc when we have two distinct ports from where we can vary the voltages or the currents the internal connections are not shown here there can be any complicated network there can be any type of interconnections in between but there are two terminals one one dashed two pairs of terminals and two two dashed brought out and you have sources connected at these points say v1 v2 sometimes we are interested in studying the properties the behavior of the network that is shown inside the block and we excite externally from 1 1 dashed or 2 2 dashed or both like in a power system say you are feeding power at this place at Kharagpur suppose we have a generating station here you are feeding power to your network there can be another uh, generating station at Jamshedpur so you can assume the two sources to be connected like this in between you are having the network given by the transmission line there can be substations drawing power so it represents a two port network okay now we are interested in finding out the relations between one set of parameters in terms of the other that is there are four parameters four variables sorry four variables we assume the currents going inside the network as positive so there is a voltage say at Kharagpur voltage and current there will be a voltage and current at the other end at Jamshedpur so there are four variables v1 v2 i1 i2 if two of them are known then the other two are also fixed any two of them can be given to you the other two will be related by the property of the network interconnection so how do we express the network parameters the, the interconnected elements that decides the property of the network how do you represent the two sets of current voltages by different methods okay so one of the say we call them parameters these network values that we shall be computing are known as parameters the first one is open circuit or z parameters let us see what it means suppose you are given the voltages at the two ends we are feeding the network from two ends with voltages v1 and v2 you are asked to compute the currents what will be the currents i1 and i2 given the network this is one problem that you have normally used in superposition theorem you take v1 at a time v1 short circuit the other end then v2 short circuit this end cal calculate all the currents okay for, for the network and then when you excite both of them that will be the algebraic sum we represent by a by a matrix equation we can represent v1 v2 i1 i2 i am sorry if you are given the currents i1 and i2 i am injecting so much ampere from terminal 1 1 dash i am injecting so much current from the other end then what will be the corresponding voltages this can be one problem so we express 
if you just substitute i 1 and i 2, if these parameters are known, this matrix is known, then you can compute v 1 and v 2. Okay. The other one is voltage is given, what will be the current? We call them y parameters, when the voltages are given and you are asked to determine the currents, you take the help of the y parameters or short circuit parameters, admittance parameters, there are different names. And the third one is if you are given in a mixed mode that is a voltage and current at the receiving end say at Jamshedpur and you are to calculate the voltage and current at Khadakpur. All right. So, if you are given V 2 I 2 what will be V 1 I 1 or vice versa. So, V 1 I 1 if it is to be calculated from V 2 I 2 mind you this sign V 2 I 2 then these parameters are known as transmission parameters or ABCD parameters. Transmission parameters or ABCD parameters. For transmission, at one side you are putting voltage and current, at the other end you are receiving V2 and I2. All right. So, it is from one end to the other end. You see V1, V2, I1, I2, these are in a mixed mode in a sense that voltage of this, voltage of that. That means both the terminals, the variables at both the terminals were used as inputs as well as outputs. If this is given as the input, you are given I1 and I2, but at two different nodes. Okay. Transmission means as if you are transmitting power from one end to the other, you are computing from this side, if you are knowing V 1 I 1, what will be V 2 I 2 or if you are receiving V 2 I 2, what will be V 1 I 1. Okay. So, now, we shall take up one by one the properties of these or how to compute these quantities. This is known as driving point impedance at terminal 1 1 dash. This is known as transfer impedance. This is also transfer impedance and this is driving point impedance at terminal 2 2 dash. Okay. Similarly, this one is driving point admittance or short circuit admittance. This is transfer admittance this is also driving point admittance. A, B, C, D they are known as A, B, C, D parameters. What will be A? What will be B? We will see A is basically a voltage gain okay, or voltage ratio. Similarly, a D is a current ratio of course, with a negative sign. Similarly, B represents the impedance. We will also try to establish relations between different parameter sets. What will be the relation between given z's can you calculate y's or a b c d or given a b c d can you calculate y or z. So, interdependence of different uh, rather uh, relationship between different sets of parameters that will be our next task. For that to start with uh, we will be discussing about the determination of these parameters. Let us see first the z parameters. Or open circuit parameters. V1 I1, sorry, V1 V2 we wrote Z11, Z12, Z21, Z22. I 1, I 2. 
Now you can see what will be Z11? Z11 when I2 is equal to 0, it is the ratio of V1 by I1. Okay? So, V1 by I1 when sorry, I2 is 0. Okay? Let us take a very simple example. Suppose you have I will write a general impedance Z A, Z B, Z C, 1, 1 dashed, 2, 2 dashed, a simple T network. Okay. Now, if I want to make I 2 equal to 0, there is no current to this, so this has to be kept open. So, that is why it is known as open circuit parameter. All right. So, if I keep it open, and measure the ratio of V1 by I1, how much is it? Yes, it will be Z A plus Z C, Z A plus Z C. Similarly, Z2 to Z B plus Z C, I hope this is understood. And then what will be Z1 to? It is V1 by I2 when I1 is 0, that means, that means I keep it open. I do not send any current through this, keep it open. And then what is the voltage V1? What is the voltage obtained here? That divided by this current. So, I send 1 ampere current say through this. How much is the voltage here? 1 into Zc. So, V1 by I2, when I2 is 1 ampere, it will be Zc into 1. All right. Whenever you want to compute any ratio, put the denominator as 1 and then see what will be the effect. So, if I2 is 1, V1 is equal to Zc. So, Zc, so that means if I have a T arrangement or a star network like this, so, Z A plus the shunt element will be the impedance seen from this side, open, uh, the driving point impedance or Z 1 1. Similarly, Z 2 2 will be this impedance plus the shunt element and Z 1 2 will be this shunt element. So, will be Z 2 1. You can see by the same logic, if I want to compute Z 2 1, it will be V 2 by I 1. So, I excite it from this side. Sorry. I excite it from this side, I pass a current I 1 and measure the voltage here, I 2 is made 0. So, I measure the voltage here. So, that will also be Z C. So, this is also equal to V 2 by I 1. Should I write like this V 1 by I 2? Under what condition? I 1 equal to 0. Similarly, this one I 2 equal to 0. Thank you. So, that will be equal to Z12 or Z21. Is it all right? Now, any network, if you are given any network like this, there could have been many more connections, maybe a connection like this. Okay. I can always reduce it by repeated star delta conversions to an equivalent star. Okay. So, this pi network I could have converted to a star all right. and then again add with the elements here this one and then again a delta. So, delta to star conversions if I make a repeated conversions I can finally bring it to this. Once you know these these three elements, then straight away this plus this is Z11, this plus this is Z22 and this one is Z12 or Z21. All right, It is a symmetric matrix. For linear, lumped, finite, bilateral network, bilateral means impedance seen from this side and impedance seen from this side will be identical for any element. Okay. If I put a diode, then it no more remains a bi, uh, bilateral. Okay. 
So, if you do not have any diode, if you have only passive elements, only passive elements, then you will find Z12 is equal to Z21 and it is a symmetric matrix. Okay. You can extend this concept of representing voltage in terms of the current that is voltage vector in terms of the current vector in a multi port network. In a multi port network therefore, we will have V1, V2, Vn, n number of ports and this will be Z11, Z12, Z13 to Z1n. Similarly, Zn1 up to Znn, I1, I2 and In. Okay. It will be a network like this. I am showing only 4 ports here, there can be many, many more ports. That means, you are feeding power, alright. These are voltages and corresponding currents. Similarly, say 1, 1 dashed, 2, 2 dashed, 3, 3 dashed and so on. So, 4, 4 dashed and so on. So, if I have a multi port network like this to compute these values i have to keep only one of the var variables here active others mu must be made zero so z11 in this case we shall be defining as v1 by i1 where i2 i3 i4 all of them are made zero that means all the terminals are kept open so you take one at a time these currents and rest of them are made zeros and you evaluate these parameters okay next we come to okay uh, just one more minute from here you can write i in terms of v also i therefore will be if i am uh, writing in a matrix form Z inverse V matrix V matrix means it is a vector here will be equal to I. Okay. Suppose we write in the Y parameter in terms of the Y parameters that is Again, we will come back to two port network I1 and I2. We write in terms of Y11, Y12, Y21, Y22 into V1, V2. Now, the voltages are given. If you are given the voltages V1 and V2, what will be the currents I1 and I2 that get? that uh, current set will get fixed by the admittance parameters. How much would be what will be the expression for Y11? It will be I1 by V1 under what condition? V2 equal to 0. Is it same as V1 by I1 Z11 inverse? Uh, no, Z11 was computed when the circuit was kept open. Now, you are keeping it short, V2 is 0 means short circuited. So, let us take once again that two port elements we could have, we had obtained uh, finally after reduction uh, T element set Z A, Z B, Z C. Okay. Now, let us take a pi element set or a delta form. That is, you can always write either in terms of a star or a delta form.
So, let this be represented by their corresponding admittances that is I write this as y a which is equal to 1 by z a if this is z a this z a has got nothing to do with the earlier z a earlier I had written small z a z b z small a z small b z small c ok. So, here I am writing all right uh, let me put this as c that will be better z c. Similarly, this one as y a which is 1 by z a whatever is the impedance inverse of that y b which is nothing but 1 by z b. So, if I make v 2 equal to 0 v 2 is equal to 0 that means, I short circuit this then I send a current here measure the voltage here all right. So, for any such ratio you make the denominator 1 that means, I apply 1 volt supply voltage here and measure the current I 1 after shorting this. So, how much is it? It is the admittance seen from 1 1 dashed under this condition. So, it is 2 parallel elements y a and y c ok is it not z a and z c are in parallel. So, you add their admittances y a plus y c very good. Similarly, y 2 2 will be y b plus y c when I am shorting this side. What about y 1 2? What about y 1 2? How do you measure y 1 2? y 1 2 is i 1 by v 2 when v 1 is 0. So, I short circuit this and then measure the current here when I am applying a voltage v 2. So, y 1 2 is i 1 by v 2 i 1 by v 2 when v 1 is equal to 0 and how much is that? By convention i 1 is positive when it is flowing in this direction. Now, when I am shorting this and applying a voltage here there will be a current that will be flowing like this. This current does not affect this does it? This current is independent of this side. I am measuring only this current and since this is short, so this is redundant there is no current flowing to this all the currents will be flowing to this. So, the current flowing through this side will be through y c and then through this 0 at uh, 0 impedance. So, how much is the total admittance y c only y c what about sign because the current is flowing in the opposite direction. So, it will be minus y c ok. Now, if you are given these y parameters there is a black box given to you I have given you 2 ports 4 terminals and I ask you to perform this short circuit test that is you short circuit one side 2 to dash make a measurement from this side make the measurement of the current on the other side voltage from this side voltage and current at this end and so on. That is you measure V V 1 I 1 I 2 again excite the other side short circuit this side 1 1 dash apply a voltage V 2 V 2 I 2 and I 1 ok. So, you will get all the 4 quantities this is also I 2 by V 1 by the same logic when v 2 is 0 when I short circuiting this applying a voltage and measuring this current is it all right. If you are given these parameters, but inside I do not know what it is there can be number of elements interconnected ok. Now, what will be the equivalent parameter values y a y b y c 
it is very simple whatever you calculated as y12 take the negative value of that that will be yc is it not so the element values are yc is equal to minus y12 have you understood the question the question is if you have already evaluated y11 y12 y21 y22 what will be the equivalent delta network what will be the equivalent pi network elements i will straight away write yc is equal to minus y12 and then ya how much is ya it is y11 minus yc and minus yc means y12 so y11 plus y12 similarly yb will be y22 plus y12 is it not now for this also you can generalize you can write i1 i2 up to in this can be an n by n matrix like uh, the earlier one for an n port network and you will have v1 v2 up to vn okay so matrix y i could have written vector i is equal to matrix y into vector v so y is nothing but z inverse so elements of y can also be computed once you know the open circuit parameters you can calculate the short circuit parameters is that all right so we have seen that for the z parameters or open circuit parameters uh, representation like this a t representation is very convenient the element values are directly related to the z parameters similarly if you are given the y parameters or if you are asked to calculate y parameters take the network in the pi form then from the values of the impedances directly you can calculate the parameters is that all right thank you very much we will continue with this in our next class friends we shall continue our discussions on two port network in the last class we have established relations between the voltages and currents in terms of y parameters and z parameters let us take a simple example of a resistive network say these are the values given 5 ohms 10 ohms 10 ohms 20 ohms and 20 ohms it's just an arbitrary set of values i have taken what would be the z parameters say z11 it is the voltage at this point at this port divided by the current when this is kept open so z11 is 5 ohms plus 10 ohms in parallel with 10 plus 20 30 so it will be 10 into 30 by 10 plus 30 so that gives me 300 by 40 7.5 plus 5 so it gives me 12.5 ohms okay similarly what will be z22 it is the impedance in from this side when this is kept open so it is 20 plus 20 in parallel with 20 10. so that is 10 30 ohms i should write this ohms this is also in ohms okay z12 
if you want to determine it will be v1 by i2 when i1 is 0. So, if I keep it open send a current here how much is the voltage drop here that means how much is the voltage here since this is kept open this voltage is this voltage is kept open and I am forcing in a voltage from this end. So, it is V A 1 A 2 plus B 1 C 2. B will be B will be see this multiplied by this A 1 A 2 plus B 1 C 2 then this multiplied by this. So, A 1 B 2 plus B 1 D 2 A 1 B 2 plus B 1 D 2. Mind you this coefficient this uh, element A is the ratio of two voltages. So, it is a dimensionless constant dimensionless parameter. Okay. Now, the, uh, it will have a magnitude does it have an angle it may have an angle so, if the impedances are complex normally in a transmission line you have R L C. So, impedances are uh, in a complex form. So, the ratio can be a complex constant dimensionless, but it may have an angle. So, here also we find it is the product of two dimensionless quantities it is this. B 1 what was the dimension of B 1 say B, B is the ratio between voltage and current that is impedance and C is current and voltage that is admittance. So, B and C product will also be a dimensionless quantity one is more the other is O. So, this confirms to the dimension of this similarly B impedance this one is impedance multiplied by a constant is also impedance multiplied by constant because D has the dimension of uh, it does not have any dimension it is the ratio of two currents. So, similarly C and D you can write. So, we will stop here for today and next time we will take up uh, we will discuss something about hybrid parameters and then we will take up some uh, numerical problems. So, the next class will be a tutorial class on whatever we have covered so far, we will have some problems. Okay. Thank you very much.